at the UK Independence Party. Well, they've surged to their highest ever poll rating. A poll for the Daily Mail today has them sitting at 16% ahead of the Liberal Democrats on just 11%. And their leader, Nigel Farage, joins me now. A very good morning good to you, morning. Mr Farage. Big smile on your face. Is that because of, uh, of that poll rating? Yes, our highest ever. Delighted. I mean, we started off last year, exactly a year ago, we were on 4.5% of the polls, so to go up to 16 uh, is huge progress. OK, us. so what do you put it down to? Is it uh, your stance, obviously, on Europe, on immigration, or does it go beyond that? It goes beyond that. Um, I think that people see us uh, as actually standing up and saying what we think, not being constrained or scared by political correctness. Uh, they see us as a party that unashamedly wants to stand up for Britain and for British people. Um, and I think on the top line issues that you mentioned, Europe and immigration, uh, we've been abused for a decade for even daring to talk about these things. Well now the arguments that UKIP has made are absolutely at the heart of the national debate in this country. Okay, and clashing directly with the Conservatives on this, the Conservatives uh, we hear, well, we hear from behind the scenes, worried about all this. The Prime Minister's been speaking this morning, just a few minutes ago, uh, and you say you've been traduced, I suppose, in, in the past. The Prime Minister's still referring to some rather odd people in, yes. uh, in the United Kingdom independence. Yes, yeah, poor old Mr Cameron. I mean, I, I think what this comes down to is that David Cameron himself doesn't understand how ordinary people feel. You know, it is not outrageous to say that mass immigration into Britain has run at too big a pace and that we should do something about it. And somehow to David Cameron, uh, even to say those things is wrong. So it shows really how disconnected he is. If he wants to go on being rude about me and rude about UKIP, well, let him do it. We won't lose any sleep. But over. could you ever do business with the Conservatives? It's been mooted in the past, remember last year, and you said, OK, you don't like what Mr Cameron's saying, maybe you could... Uh, talk to the Conservatives if they were led by someone like Michael Gove. Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's any prospect of any deal with the Conservative Party, all the while that man leads it, uh, given the way that he's behaved um, and his attitude towards us. Uh, look, I would do a deal with the devil if it got us what we need, which is a free and fair referendum so that we in this country can decide who governs. Well, say so you don't even have to do a deal with the devil. Say uh, the Prime Minister, when he makes this speech, this long-awaited speech on Europe, maybe next week, maybe the week after, and he offers a referendum, then he shot your fox, hasn't he? Well, he did it once before, remember. I give you this cast iron guarantee, he said, that if I become Prime Minister, there'll be a referendum on the Lisbon Treaty, and he let us all down like a cheap pair of braces. And I think the big problem is, Prime Minister, if this really matters, if this issue is vital, then call the referendum before the next general election. Of course I would support that wholeheartedly, but he's not going to do it. OK, but he's going into these, whenever they take place, these negotiations. He says he's going to come back and put that before the people. It might not satisfy you, but it might satisfy a lot of people who said, well, you know, it's... Uh, yeah. Well, this, this is the old contract. The UK Independence this is the old contract that was carried out back in the 1970s. Harold Wilson went to Brussels to renegotiate. Renegotiated nothing of substance at all. Came back to the country and said, look, chaps, it's just a common market. Nothing to worry about. And in a referendum, the people believed him. What Cameron's going to do is come back and say, all we've got is the single market, which is fairly innocuous sounding, but in reality uh, is the source of most of our upset and anger with Europe. That is what he's going to try and do. But, but none of this happens, of course, unless there is a Conservative majority after the next mm. election, uh, and that looks increasingly OK, unlikely. yes, and, and, and as it stands now, uh, your polling jeopardises that, because also in the Daily Mail today is this estimation that your party's performance, mm. if there were a general election now, could cost the Conservatives up to 50 seats. Not 50 seats that go to UKIP, but 50 seats that presumably go to Labour well, and elsewhere who are even more pro Well, I think that's a bit simplistic. But I mean, but are you prepared to see that happen? You'd rather... No. You, you, you are so anti-Conservative and anti-David Cameron that if that happens, then so be no, it. No, I'm anti 75% of our laws being made in Brussels. I'm anti the fact that we can't control the City of London. We don't control employment legislation. We don't control environmental legislation. I'm anti the fact that we can't do our own trade deals with other parts of the world because we're trapped inside hmm. this European Union. So, so, yeah. so, and frankly, I mean, you can't put a cigarette paper between the Labour and Conservative parties on issues of real substance, it would make no difference to British business whether Labour or the Conservatives sat in Downing Street. Mm, but it would make a difference to British business. Let's talk about some of the nitty-gritty of the policy. If you have your way and we withdraw yeah. from Europe, we have a trading agreement with business say, well, you know, that's just not good enough because we, not, we don't have a seat at the table. We don't have commissioners. We, they make decisions all the time that affect our businesses and yeah. we have no say. Well, there's a bit of a sort of misconception here. Uh, that is that somehow Britain Britain is shaping and changing legislation in Brussels. Believe you me, I've been there for 13 years. We only have 8% of the votes 
within the European structures. Uh, we're consistently, constantly actually, outvoted. We have a veto on virtually nothing left. Um, and now, uh, you know, from the French, the Germans, across Europe, Britain is hated. You know, they blame the city of London for the Eurozone crisis. We've got very little influence at all. Norway, the, the, the Prime Minister keeps quoting Norway yep. as if, wouldn't it be awful if we were like Norway? What do you mean? Rich, independent, prosperous, doing well, one of the happiest nations on earth, and actually who also do have input into the legislation mm. and have recently vetoed a series of major European But isn't European that the point? Directives. I mean, you know, the Norwegian parallel, they're still in the European economic area to, they allow, are, to allow yes. them to trade. But then this impacts, doesn't it, on one of your other key policies, but that still allows the free movement of peoples within yes, Europe. I, I mean, you know, those, those Romanians and Bulgarians want, you're so worried about could want, still come here. I wouldn't want Britain to have European economic area membership because uh, we would go on uh, with, with a, a, a masses of legislation coming every year and with the free movement of peoples. And, and, and I think that, uh, you know, as I look forward to 2013, I mean, for UKIP, the biggest single issue is going to be highlighting the fact that from the 1st of January next year, 29 million people from very poor countries in Romania mm. and Bulgaria will have access not just to the jobs market, but to the social security system too. I mean, an awful lot of those peoples have already come from other East European countries. What happens under a UKIP plan? Are they allowed to stay? Are their dependents allowed to come and join them? What happens to the, well, the million odd we estimate well, that are here? you can't turn the clock back and you cannot say to people who've legally come to a country, you can't be here. That would be quite the wrong thing to do. But what you can do um, is put in place a proper immigration policy that says we only want foreign workers in Britain if okay. they're bringing skills could, to this could country. Could their dependents join them? Uh, I mean, we've got to stop this. You know, the census figures were truly shocking. I'd been saying three million new migrants in the last ten years. The census proved it was in fact four million. Okay, Mr. Farage, thank you very much thank indeed, you. Nigel Farage, there, the leader of UKIP, of course. So, uh, well, what does all this mean for the Conservatives? I'm joined now by the Conservative Party Chairman, Grant Shapps. Very good morning to you, Mr. Shapps. Uh, the Prime Minister has been saying on this issue of UKIP that, in a way, you've uh, just rather lent any of your supporters that have gone over to them. How do you win them back? Well, I think what we have to do is set out a programme for government uh, in the next parliament, which is very full. And we, we, you can see some of our priorities already. We want to make sure that we are the party that always makes work pay in this country, that takes us back to a situation where when someone goes out and does us an honest day's work, they know at the end of it they're going to be better off than uh, if they're on um, other benefits or, or welfare. We want a society where more of the uh, uh, laws are, of course, made here, where the education society, uh, 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 policies mean that people can go to school and have a, a really good education with proper rigour in the classrooms again. So there's a whole series of things that we want to do um, and uh, that's what we'll be setting out in our next manifesto. And you think that's going to appeal to UKIP supporters? Well, look, one thing I know about uh, UKIP supporters is um, it's not just Europe that will concern them and that's why you have to have a very full range of policies uh, in order to attract people. Um, and uh, look, actually, Realistically, UKIP don't have um, any members of uh, Parliament, uh, and we're going to set out our programme on the basis no. of what we'd like to do. Um, they, for this but country. you know, th th that doesn't matter. They've got they've got MEPs and they've got a big last, poll rating. Uh, they've got millions of, years, of people who say right. they'll they'll vote for them. I mean, the real thing that would satisfy them is a commitment to an in-out referendum on Europe. I just heard it from Nigel Farage before the next election. Do you think you're going to get anywhere close to offering them that? Well, look, I, I'm afraid I just differ uh, with Nigel Farage on this. Uh, we believe that we should be in Europe, not run by Europe. We do think that the balance of power uh, or where the uh, rules are being made is wrong at the moment. We think that that's a mainstream British view, that more of our control should be um, here. And we think that we need to go out and uh, have that conversation. Um, that's what we think needs to, to happen. Um, the idea that uh, you know, we would be best served by, uh, for example, not having major corporations, for example, from America or elsewhere, come and settle in Britain and export to Europe because they've got access to that open market, I don't see how that could help our, our jobs in this country, for example. Um, so this is a you know, complex issue, but it's one of only very many issues. And I think, look, we're mid-parliament. People you know, often uh, during mid-parliament um, look to protest somewhere. Uh, in the past, that's been to 
the Lib Liberal Democrats. They're in, in government, of course, uh, now. But I think come the next election, another two, two and a half years' time, people will be able to have a look at the full track record, which will include, you know, uh, having dealt with a uh, large amount of the, the deficit, some of the really big issues that are facing this country, some of the really difficult decisions we've had to, to, to make in order to get this country back on track. Well, let's turn to one of them right now, and of course, they're concerning the party that is uh, the real concern to you, of course, the party that's uh, leading by a street in the polls at the moment, and of course, the, the Labour Party. I want to talk about this, uh, this benefits vote taking place on Tuesday, the decision to cap benefits for the next three years at 1% working age benefits. And um, you say in the Conservative Party that you're not trying to demonise those on benefits, yet the Chancellor has referred to them as people who have the curtains drawn as others go to work. And we see uh, Ian Duncan Smith, the Work and Pension Secretary, writing in The Sun today um, a story which has a, a photograph uh, of presumably someone on benefits at the top of uh, the story. I'm sure you're familiar with, with it, Mr Shapps. Uh, you may well have been uh, part of choosing this image. It's a fat slob in a vest, lying on a sofa with uh, a half-eaten takeaway meal beside him. I is that how you view the unemployed and those on benefits? No. Um, look, I think this is just a simple matter of fairness. When people go out to work, um, I think that they have a right to know that they're better off than if they were living um, off uh, welfare and benefits. Um, now, I think we absolutely have a duty, a responsibility to look after the most vulnerable people in society, and we have to go out of our way to make sure that we do that. So this 1% cap on the rise in welfare will not apply to people with disabilities, won't apply to carers, for example, but it will apply um, to the remainder. And the purpose is simple. When you go out and you do a day's work, you should always know that you're better off than being on welfare. And unfortunately, uh, during the Labour years, and actually, frankly, for um, several decades now, the system's been so complex, so difficult to understand, that as a constituency MP, I'll spend hours with people trying to work out whether they'd be better off working an extra few hours a week or not. That's mad. You should always know you can go out to work. Just, I'm just interested, in, just interested in the imagery here. What proportion of people on benefits do you regard as unfortunate people who've suffered in this recession and the one before it? And, and what proportion do you believe are the, are the fat slobs with the curtains drawn? No, I think the vast majority of people on benefits are stuck in a system which is perfectly unfair to them. In other words, what happens is, even if you want to, and I think most people absolutely want to, uh, in their heart of hearts, get out there and, 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 and work, the problem is that the system rather cruelly means that uh, it's often very difficult to find a job which is going to pay you more than benefits will for not working. So I think it's the cruelness of the system uh, that's wrong. And I also well, think just it's a fairness issue because everyone who's working has to pay the taxes and also in order to pay the benefits. Well, I mean, give, give, give me what you said there. I'm just wondering, are you going to complain to The Sun then for, for headlining this, this article with that picture, which would obviously suggest to the reader that that's the way Ian Duncan Smith and indeed the Conservative Party regard those people on benefits. It's the picture supporting the story. Well, look, we're not the picture editors. I haven't seen, I haven't seen the, the page layout, but we're not the picture editors for the story. What I can tell you is that there are probably a very small number of people. I heard Ed Balls refer to them um, this week, the Labour uh, Labor guy, saying that actually there are some people um, who uh, would simply prefer not to uh, work. I'm sure that's the case. I think the vast majority are not those people. I think the vast majority are people who are trapped in a system which is blatantly unfair. It stops them from working even though they want to. OK, Mr Shapps, thank you very much indeed. Conservative Party Chairman Grant.